pretty quick. I got right into the whole whole music scene right after. Um, I only had been graduated for maybe five months, and I sent a song to Bygore Records, and they took a little bit to respond. And so um, I ended up releasing the song by myself. And the very next day, they actually reached back out to me saying they really like the song and they want to release it. And I was like, oh man, I actually, I actually already. Uh, released it and everything and they're like oh, okay well just send us new music whenever you can and so i was kind of on the radar at that point and so i got into like a i became a hermit and worked on a song for, for like four months and i was going i was just working on it. i was like this song has to be perfect i'm gonna send it to them and they're gonna really like it so i sent it to them and uh like a week later his girlfriend uh she emailed me and said hey Cape, what's up? I actually showed this song to Borgor and he said that he really liked the song and wanted to know if you wanted to turn it into an official uh, Borgor and Cape collaboration and just send him all the stems and he'll work on it. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was so excited. I was there with my girlfriend, we were making breakfast burritos. I was like, oh, I got an email back from, from Sonia, which is his, his girlfriend. And I was like reading it and I kind of like, kind of like blacked out a little bit because I had never had like a big release or anything never done anything and the first song like I sent to them they responded well and then the second one I sent hey let's make it a big collaboration like, oh my gosh I've been listening to this guy forever since I was a kid his song with G-Eazy his song with Bella Thorne Miley Cyrus like this is crazy and so uh we started working on it it was really cool he was posting videos he'd been playing it all over the world he played a show at like this ski resort in somewhere in Europe and that was really crazy uh he I was just, I was freaking out. I was like, there's no way out this is actually happening. I'm actually getting to make a song with someone this big, getting to see people all over the world just go crazy to it. He played it at EDC Mexico. I watched the live stream and I was like, wait, sounds like our song's coming up. And I was like, this is it, this is it. I was like, honey, like, look, get in here. And we were watching everyone go crazy to it. And it was it was just so exciting. And ever since then, I've been really close with them. I, I We always play video games together. I send them music. I get stuff released on their label. Um, so that's just really cool. Their new A&R, he reaches out to me about projects and things like that, that they're gonna have like like a big comeback album for like their sub labels and stuff like that. So I get a I get a release music with them, which is a label I've always wanted to be on. They have like the coolest graphic designers, their cover arts are awesome. They're super fun people. So that was awesome as heck. I, I just thinking about it, I feel like I'm reliving the first moments of it. I grew up in a really tiny little farm town. Uh, my graduating class was like 30 people. And uh, I just somehow fell in love with just the overall aspect of electronic music. I found Dead Mouse when I was like in sixth grade. Started listening to him, um, Skrillex. I thought he was the coolest person ever. And then I discovered Borgor. And I just, I got a launch pad and I started doing little mashups on it with like electronic music and stuff and i just got a, like i got like a really strong passion for it and growing up where i grew up there was there's no classes for it no nothing i was desperate to find something and so going through high school um i took uh, i took music theory with the local uh community college and i was just like man like this isn't it i need to find something like to teach me how to produce music something and so then i I was looking through the internet and I found something for Recording Connection and I found they actually had a program for electronic music production with Ableton. And I told my parents, my guys, like, this is it. I got to do this. This is, this is my way to actually learn. I can actually go somewhere and learn how to do this. I found Recording Connection and it was perfect. It was like, they got a whole program. They teach you everything with Ableton, how to make music. I get an internship. I get to go to a studio, all this stuff available for me. My parents were like, all right, yep, let's, let's do it. When my first day came around, um, I walked in and I met Josh and instantly, this guy has the same humor as me. Like we are just joking the whole time. He's like, yeah, just sit down, just work work on some music. Your first day, I'm just gonna watch your workflow and I'm just working on music and like, I just feel comfortable with this guy. He's instantly like someone I can joke with, super easy to just be myself around. We're just working on music and he's like, yeah, actually I've got some uh, rappers coming in. I'm gonna record them. Like you can do sit in if you want. So. I sat in, I watched him, how he works. I got to see how he records them, how he sets up the microphones and everything like that. Um, he told me all about, you know, mixing in vocalists and things like that. Cause he said, if you're making dubstep, you know, you want to know how to do this. He's like, you need to cut these frequencies out. 
And that first day I learned a lot more than I've learned in months of even my own little research through YouTube and trying to figure things out myself. And so Josh was just super, super big on taking me in and actually like showing me things and inviting me to come and sit in at the studio and watch how things are done. Um, he introduced me to a lot of people he was working with, which was super cool. Well, I'll usually, I'll be doing something like driving or I'll be in the shower and I'll get, as corny as it sounds, I'll get like a story in my head or like, like a cool scene that I'm envisioning. And once I get that, I'll go to my computer and then I'll try to write that out or, or even a feeling or something like that, like a story. For my branding, I have like a, it's, he's called the cultist, but he has like the plague doctor mask and he wears like a, like a robe with a hood and he has like a sword. And I like to envision like stories of like him out in the forest and like there's kids camping and he like takes over their mind and things like that. Or, or uh, he's like a lost individual that's trying to figure out who he is and what turned him into that. Or he's trying to like, he has like a lost lover that he like turned evil after something like that. It's, 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 it's literally a story. I always think of it like that. Like me and my friend wrote a song, it was called Lunar Light. And it was like a big story of like him in space, like trying to conquer the moon. And it was, it was just a crazy song. And you can actually feel it and envision that story when you're told it. So that's what I, I usually do. I would just get caught up so bad. It was my biggest weakness on the smallest little things before even the song is finished. I'll be starting on just an intro and I'll get caught up on little details. And working with Josh, I learned and he taught me, hey, it's okay if it's like, just, just get the song done, get the overall idea and worry about the little things then. Don't get caught up in the little things because when you're doing that, you're actually not writing the song. You're just nitpicking little things write the song and then go about the little things get a song done is the most important thing every you taught me everything matters that you do when you're writing a song when you get caught in little things it ruins your creative flow just write write it out get it there even put placeholders even if you don't like how it sounds put little placeholders in it or something so at least there is a song there an idea and then you can work on it there just get it, the overall idea out well um do you hear the phrase, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, but when you actually think about it, you got to shoot your shot. And I've really adopted the like living by my own terms. I'm just going to shoot my shot. The worst thing they say is no. Like, I, at least I know that I'm trying my best to work with these bigger artists. I don't want to be 80 years old thinking about what could have been. I'm glad I'm actually somewhere now going ahead and chasing my dreams.